Hey guys, I'm Jeremy Yoder from Mad Scientist Barbecue. Today I'm here in Bozeman, Montana at Birch Barrel headquarters to cook some of my favorite foods on my favorite grill, the Birch Barrel. At this point we have our coals lit the way we want and so we can pour them into the coal pan and we're going to be ready to start cooking. And it's really important that you get a good quality charcoal because the high quality charcoal burns hotter, burns cleaner, burns with more flavor and lasts longer and lights more easily than if you go and buy some kind of commercial you know, briquettes or you get some cheap lump charcoal. So spend the money wisely and get great quality charcoal like Macho Quebracho. I've been using it for a while. I'm a really big fan. Today we're going to be cooking a beautiful steak from Better Fed Beef. So the key here is marbling. If you look at this steak, you see all kinds of white lines of fat running through it. That's going to be a juicy steak in the end, and that's what you're really looking for. Also, this thing's about two inches thick, so it's going to be really meaty, really hearty, and you're not going to be able to eat a whole steak. I'm not going to be able to eat a whole steak. So first, we got to season it up. Now, it being a thick cut of meat, we have to season generously, and we want to do it early on because the salt will begin to penetrate the meat. It's going to break apart into its ions and start going through the meat, but it needs enough time to get to the center because we're not going to cook it like a brisket for 16 hours. So we need to get the salt on early and let it sit for a long time before we put it on the grill. Today we season this steak with just salt and pepper because when you have a great cut of meat like this one from Better Fed Beef, you have this bone, you have a thick cut, it's going to be beefy, it's going to be awesome. We don't want to confuse the flavors that we're putting on the outside. So we're keeping it simple because you want salt, of course, because that's going to be necessary for each bite. And then we have some pepper to complement the beef. You don't want to put so much rub on there, like so many different flavors that you're confusing what the palate is going to be interpreting when you take a bite later. So with this, we have a couple layers of flavor that we're going to do. We're going to smoke it first and bring it up to the temperature that we want. And then we're going to sear it because that crust on the outside, we don't want to have a bunch of spices and seasonings interrupting that crust formation because that's where all the flavor is. And then finally, we're going to add some butter, rosemary, thyme, garlic to add the final layer of flavor for this steak. But at this point, we want to keep it simple and we want to keep the main thing the main thing. Now that we have our coals in the coal pan, it's time to add some wood. And there are a lot of varieties of wood out there. And traditionally, what people use in a given area is what's available to them. This is oak. Also, it's great for beef because we don't have a long time, like barbecue, to add smoke flavor. So we need the smoke flavor to get in there quickly. And for that reason, I'm using a pretty dense, pretty water-heavy piece of wood because that's going to smoke and provide more flavor because we're not using this for heat. The charcoal is for heat. This is for smoke flavor. Now that the charcoal and wood are in place and our steak is seasoned, it's time to begin the cooking process. And like I said before, we're going to do a reverse sear. If you're not familiar with this method, it essentially is two parts. A low temperature phase where you bring the meat up to exactly the right internal temperature, and then a high heat searing phase so that you can make sure you get the exact right doneness and a great sear without overcooking your steak. And the beauty of the birch barrel is doing a reverse sear is really easy because you control the temperature that your steak is cooking at by raising and lowering the grill grate. So you don't have to worry about your temperatures getting away from you. You can simply raise the grate up if you want the temperature to be lower. And then when it comes time to sear, you can lower it all the way down and get a great crust on the outside of that steak. At this point, I drop the lid down, lock it into place. And finally, I raise it so that I have the exact right temperature that I want and if it's a little warmer than I want, raise it up another couple of inches. If it's not quite hot enough, lower it down another couple of inches. It couldn't really be any easier to control the temperature with real live fire cooking. While that steak's taking on that great smoke flavor, both from the wood and the fat that drips into the coals and creates that aroma that we all associate with burgers or anytime we're barbecuing meat, we're gonna make kind of our finishing sauce. So our last chance to add flavor because we have a few layers of flavor going on right now. And then at the end, we're gonna add flavor and moisture with a butter, you could call it a sauce, but really it's kind of an infused butter mixture. And so all you need is regular butter. I prefer to use unsalted because I wanna control that salt aspect as much as possible on my own. And then we have garlic because who doesn't like garlic? I love garlic. And then for the herbal notes, we have rosemary and thyme. If you prefer one over the other, that's totally fine. I like them both, so I use them both. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our garlic cloves and you don't have to chop them up. You can do it really simply. Just take your knife, put it on its edge and then kind of pound it into the cutting board. And this opens up the garlic so that it starts to infuse flavor into the butter mixture. So we'll do that with a few. And if you really like garlic, you can do more. If you don't, you can do less. Okay, very simple. Now we add the butter. And it works better if you have room temperature butter, but it's not a big deal because we're going to heat this up 
for two reasons. Number one, we want it to be a liquid so we can spread it evenly. And then the second reason is as we heat that butter up, that high temperature oil is going to start leaching out those flavor compounds that we have in the garlic, the rosemary, and the thyme. And so this butter will be infused with that flavor. It won't just be butter with some stuff thrown in. A sprig of rosemary. And take it easy on the rosemary. You can use too much. And we have this simple addition to the birch barrel. We're going to put it on the grate and it's going to liquefy, get all those flavors in there. And then there's a side benefit. Because smoke has fat soluble compounds, some of the smoky compounds are going to get dissolved in this butter. So you have another layer of smoke flavor that you can add at the end after we slice it. You put this on top, every bite's going to be succulent, juicy, and a little extra smoky because of this. At this point, the steak has come up to about 121 degrees. So that's perfect. We're going to pull it off and we're going to let it rest because the heat on the outside is gonna travel into the center of the steak. We don't want it to overcook through carryover cooking. So if you've heard people talk about carryover, that's what they're referring to. The outside being really hot and eventually that heat making its way inside. We wanna avoid that so that we don't have an overcooked steak. That's the whole purpose behind a reverse sear. So while it's resting, we're gonna add some coals, build up this fire to get super, super hot, and then we can get a crazy sear on the outside. Okay, we pulled our steaks off when they hit about 123, 124 internal. So at that point, we just wanna let them rest because we don't want them to keep cooking. We want them to kind of slow down and stop before they become overcooked so that when we sear them, they don't overcook. But while they're resting, we're gonna tent them in some foil loosely. At this point, we're getting ready to sear them. And because the birch barrel uses height to adjust temperature, we're gonna do two things to really get that temperature super, super hot for a great sear. There's a reason why steakhouses brag about how hot their broilers are. It's cooked at 1400 degrees or it's cooked at 1200 degrees because that high heat is what allows the Maillard reaction to take place. And so the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna take the coal pan, we're gonna raise it up, we're gonna take the grate, we're gonna lower it all the way down. So when we sear these steaks, they're gonna be right next to those coals. They're gonna be getting a lot of that infrared heat that does such a great job with searing. So we're gonna move that coal pan up, bring the grate down and we're ready to sear. At this point, what you wanna do is get a paper towel and mop up all of the water on the outside surface of the steak. And the reason why is because water sucks up a ton of energy. And the boiling point of water is only 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you need at least 350 degrees of surface temperature for the Maillard reaction to take place. So that means that as long as there's water there, you're gonna be boiling the outside of the steak rather than searing it. And remember, nobody likes a boiled steak. So we're gonna get this dry on both sides. At that point, it's ready to go back on the grill and we're gonna sear it really hard, really fast. This is what you get when you have a simple process, but you execute it well. So on this steak, we have a beautiful, even brown sear. We're not looking for grill marks because that actually doesn't increase flavor. What increases flavor is that Maillard reaction that we got across the whole surface of the steak. We did it just salt and pepper, and then we have it a two-stage process. We have low and slow, where we're gently bringing up the temperature, and then we lower the grate down and we raise the coal pan up to get high heat searing for this incredible crust. At this point, we can take butter after we slice this and put it all over so every bite is juicy, succulent, and full of flavor. You get the garlic, the rosemary, the thyme, and of course, the flavor of the steak.